Well, welcome to episode two. This episode is going to be about the basic building blocks of BotPress. This is the nails, the screws, and the rebar that is what we build with. I'm going to put the notes in the description, but this is very, very important. All right, so if we open up our collapsible panel here, you will see that we have a lot of sections. We have send messages, execute, flow logic, AI, capture information, events, agents, and utility. So send messages is what your bot can say and put in the emulator. So if you drag in a text card, an audio card, file, carousel, location, whatever, these are different things that the bot can say. So it can give an audio file to the user. You can just give a normal file. It can give multiple pictures. It can give a single picture. It can give a video, a card, or a location. This is things that the bot can say. So let's say you drag in a file. Then I'm just going to upload a random file from my computer. Let's say like this picture of Sweatbot. And we just call it Sweatbot. And then if we run our code, there we go. Here we have a clickable link that has Sweatbot in it. There we go. Same with a location or a card or something like that. That's just things that your bot can say. Next is execute. And the thing that you will use the most here is the execute code card. This is the only way to run code in BotPress. Now the next five cards is our table cards, and this is what we use to interact with tables. Now you can edit tables with the execute code card, but it's much easier. And considering this is the beginner course, I'm not going to go into how you can use code to edit a table. We're just going to use the cards. These six you will probably never use if you're a beginner. I'm probably going to go into the stuff in the advanced course, but this is not going to be necessary for what you guys are going to be doing. Next up is flow logic, and this is quite an important part. Now, an expression confused me endlessly when I started BotPress. I just couldn't figure it out. The simplest way to think of an expression, if you just reword it, think of it as a conditional transition. So let me give you an example. I'm going to drag in two expressions like so, I'm just going to delete that, that was an accident. And as you can see, by default, they are true. True means always, as you can see in the label. True just means it will always transition. So we're going to turn off the uh, generative AI for both of these. We're going to delete their labels like so. And now we're going to say, okay, we are going to have two nodes. So just follow along with me here, create two nodes like this and name the one can drink and the other one cannot drink. Now we want to transition based on our user's age in this example. So our first expression, we're going to have workflow dot person info is of dot age is equal to or higher than 18. That is very, you could have used the generative AI for this, but we know what we want to do. Basically what this condition reads, if so imagine there's like an imaginary if here. We're not typing it, but let's say there's an imaginary if here. If that is true, take this route. And then we connect it to they can drink because they're 18 or older. But the if is already there. It's just not written. So you can take that away. So basically, if this condition is met, take this route that you linked it to. Now for our second expression, we're going to do the exact opposite. We're going to say workflow dot person info dot age is smaller than 18. And basically, if this condition is met, they cannot drink. Take them there. And we'll just say that, we'll just rename this cannot drink and can drink. And now if we run our code, and let's just put a send message card, we'll just put a text card in both of these, just to know where we are. And in the can drink, we'll say you can drink. And in the cannot drink, we'll send the message you can't. And there we go. Because I'm currently 17, I should be taken here. I cannot drink. So we'll run our code. And there we go. You can't drink. But now if we change my age in our code to 18, now I legally can drink. So I should be taken to the other node, this node, you can drink, because this condition is met first. And there we go. You can drink. Remember, it's very important the order in which you place these. In this scenario, it's not important, but in some scenarios in your bot building journey, it will be very important in which order you place expressions. Now, after expressions, we have intents. Now, intents, I used to use a lot, but I haven't been using them recently, but they are extremely useful. So we're going to drag in an intent card here because I can drink because I'm 18, so we don't need to put it there. 
And now in intent is basically, it's gonna figure out what the user wants to do based on information that it has. It's that, that's probably pretty vague, but basically we're gonna go over to our library section here in the very left, yeah, in our dashboard, you're gonna go over to library and here you see intents that we already have. These are by default, these are here, so cancel. You can probably figure out what this is. So basically they use AI here and you give them these 10 uh, phrases like cancel abort, basically, the AI says, okay, these are some examples. If the user says anything along these lines or anything like this specifically, if it has like the similar intent to what these words intents are, then take them there. So it's like an expression as well, just a little different. So let's create a new intent and we're gonna call this contact us. And let's say this intent, let's say you're on a website and the bot wants to figure out if the user wants to get in contact. So what are some typical things that people might say when they want to contact the business? So how can I contact you guys? For an example, this is what users might say on a website if they want to get in contact with the people of the website. So how can I contact you? Um, how can I phone you? By the way, the more the better, because as you see, they use an NLU here, a natural language understanding model. So the more it has, it still needs to be relevant, but the more the better. All right, I think four is enough just for this use case. So let's say now we just have to make sure that the bot knows that we want to use that library. So I'm going to click on the library button. We're going to use the contact us. So now let's say that we create a new node. We drag our intent to that new node and we'll give the user a phone number because they want to get into contact. Actually, let's just give them my, my email. Send that as a send message card. And now we've got to put a wait for user input card here. Because the thing is, at the moment, there is no uh, break. It just runs and runs and never stops and it never waits for us to say something. The conversation always ends before we get to say something. But now that we wait for user input, the bot will sort of stop and wait for us to say something. Oh, uh, well, here at this point. So now I'm going to restart our conversation. And here, instead of ending, it says waiting for user input. So now let's say to our bot that we want to get in contact. So let's say it in a different way than the bot is expecting it. When can we speak? And there we go. Even though when can we speak is not in our library, it knows that that it has the same intent behind it than what it has. It has the same intent behind it than these do. Basically, the user wants to speak to someone. But let's say that you didn't say anything to do with contact us at all. Let's just say, I'd like a drink. Then the bot will know that's not relevant, so it's not gonna transition. And there we go, the conversation just ended because the bot doesn't know what to do. It, do it just does nothing if this intent is not met. You see, this, which is supposed to transition if um, that transition is not met, then it's not connected to anything, so the conversation just ends. Next up, we have our AI section. For our first task, AI task, we're gonna create a new node and we're gonna drag in our AI task card. And now let's say we have a bartender bot. So we're gonna start off very simply. You are a bartender. Your job is to speak to the user and make them drinks. This is a very short one, but just for the demo. Our AI task input is basically the information that we will be giving our bot that it has to respond to. So we're just gonna say user, the user says this. Now here we're gonna use a very, very cool variable. It's called event.preview. So I need to put that in curly brackets like so, event.preview. Now event.preview just means the message that was previously sent in the conversation. So you see here, I'd like to have a drink was the previous message in the emulator. It's very handy when you don't wanna use a variable specifically, you can just say event.preview. It's very handy. And then in our result variable, we want to store the AI's response, what it says in the message AI response. Create the variable and now we can use it. Now for task examples, you can actually give the bot examples of what you want it to say in different scenarios. Now for an example, let's say our user says, um, I'd like a vodka martini. Then the AI should say, sure, would you like it? shaken and not stirred. 
as an example. And there we go, that's an example of what the AI should say in this scenario that the user would like a vodka martini. Now in advanced settings, you probably won't fiddle here a lot, but you have the option to use GPT-4 Turbo. However, I do not recommend it because it's pretty expensive and you only get $5 credit in BotPress. So I recommend sticking to 3.5 Turbo. However, crank up the temperature a little bit if you want more creative responses and you want to crank down the temperature if you don't want creative responses. So if you have a bot that is specifically meant to like be strict and it must do this every single time, the temperature should be 0, 0, 0, 0, 100%. But if you want a creative bot with varying responses every single time, and it's got to be very creative. Um, yeah, probably turn it up to about 0.4. All right, so now we have an AI task. However, now if we connect our start node to it, nothing will actually happen because the bot has pretty much no input. So what we need to do is we need to add a wait for user input card, and then we need to send the message of the bot because at the moment the bot has a response, but we don't actually see it. It's just gonna be here in our workflow variables. So we need to send a message with the AI response like that. So now if we start a conversation, conversation started, now it's gonna wait for user input. So let's tell the bot, I'd like a shot, please. The bot asks it, sure, what kind of shot would you like? The bot knows that it's a bartender and it's supposed to serve us drinks, but let's now conversate with the bot. So now let's ask the bot, how long have you been working at this bar. I've been working at this bar for five years. Now the bot completely just made this up. It doesn't know what's going on. So it just makes up a random number, but it's just to show what an AI task is because the next card is AI generated text. AI generated text kind of confused me because I wasn't sure how it differs from an AI task, but basically an AI generated text is different in the sense that it will generate the same thing every time. The prompt is the same every single time. In an AI task, its task input is different every single time. The bot's response is determined by what we say. Obviously, if we ask for a shot, if we ask it how long it's been working at the bar, it's a different response every single time. But AI generated text is the same. Well, not the same every single time, but its input is the same every single time. Next up is AI transitions. And personally, I've never used them because I've never needed to, but I'm going to link BotPress's doc video to it so that if you're interested, you can go watch it. Now, probably for the most important part of this entire video, and that is the capture information cards. Now, I'm not going to go into every single capture information card. I'm just going to show how we use them. So the ones that you're probably going to be using the most, single choice, Boolean, raw input, and wait for user input. Those will definitely be the ones that you use the most. So for this, we're going to just move this node aside and we're going to make a new node and we're going to connect our start node to it like so. And for our first one, let's drag in a single choice card. So a single choice capture information card like this means that a user can only choose from the list that we give them. So let's say that we ask our user, what drink would you like? And we give our user options like a vodka martini, a Long Island or a shot doesn't really matter. Now, if we run our code, we'll see that we only get those three choices, a shot, long island, or vodka martini. If we send another message, it will just ask us again. We cannot give our own input and you'll see why that's relevant in a second. Now, while we're here, I'm quickly gonna explain a few of the advanced configurations. Our first is our retries. And that basically means how many times will the bot send this question again before it just gives up. Retries will only work if we're using validation. That's right here. So validation is basically, validation is pretty self-explanatory, but that basically means the input that will be accepted on this capture info. Now here it's completely irrelevant because our user only has three options. However, in our raw input, I'll show in a second, validation is quite important. Cancellation means that the user can choose not to answer our question. We can enable this or we can disable this. User can cancel the capture on or off, doesn't really matter, and they can confirm before canceling, and this is what you'll say if they do cancel. Now, if we start a conversation like usual and we click cancel, as you can see, it says, thank you for visiting us. Would you like to cancel? Yes or no. So that's a pretty bad decision. You should probably just keep it as, are you sure you want to cancel? And now if we restart our conversation and now we click cancel, it says, are you sure you want to cancel? And then we choose yes or no. Now our next one is our advanced section and this is add a transition to handle failure and skip a variable is already full. So if we add a transition to handle failure, let's say that we couldn't capture our information like I just showed you. Then we can say add transition to handle failure and now on failure, let's say you can have like a backup message that just says, sorry, we couldn't capture your information. There must've been an error. Can you please try again? Now our next one is extract from history. 
Extract from history is basically the bot will look back in the conversation and see if it already has the answer. Now, this is the number of messages that it will look for in previously in the conversation. So if we select five, then it will look in the previous five messages of the conversation to see if it's there. Now that is our single choice card. It's not very versatile. So let me show you our raw input card next. Raw input is basically the same, but now the user can give their own input. So let's say, what would you like to order? And we'll save our user's response as order. Now we are capturing the user's exact answer. So now let's send that message, what I said in the conversation. Let's just say order. And now if we run our conversation and the bot asks me what I would like to order, say I send you a Long Island. So now if we run the conversation, ask me what I would like to order, let's just say beer. And there we go, it just sends the word beer back to us because that's what it says. But let's say you want to capture the raw input and you would like to give your customers a choice. Then you can say advanced configuration. Then you just say choice. And now you can add choices for the bot. So let's say they can still give their own answer, but if they would like to, they can choose from the list. So let's say they can choose from a Long Island as well, a light beer, a cider, or just juice. Now, if we run our conversation, you'll see that I can still give my own input down here. However, I can also choose from the option. So let's say I still want to give my own answer. Let's say I would like a brandy. My answer is still safe, but let's say now I choose from the choices. I say I want a cider. It will still save that. Now for our last one, I want to show you guys a validation. So you're going to drag in a number capture card, put it at the top, and we're going to ask our user, how many people are you drinking with tonight? And we're going to save the user's response as people. And it's automatically a number variable if you look right there because we are using a number capture card now we're going to go advanced configuration and validation add a new validation rule and we're going to configure the validator all right so here we have a basic validator that is just going to check if our people amount is more than 10 it see it returns false. that will check if our people amount is more than 10 so let's say if it is more than 10 we can just say our validation failed meaning that it did not validate that it is less than 10 it's going to say you have too many people save that however as you can see here our text card is send, still sending the variable order and order will not be defined. So I expect it now that if we uh, put in the correct amount of people and it allows us to go on from this capture information card, this is just gonna say undefined because the workflow.order is not defined. Here, how many people are you drinking with tonight? Max 10 people. If we put in 11 people, it's gonna say you have too many people, 20 people, still too many people but if you say we have nine people or ten people because we're not checking for there we go it allows us to go on but because order is not defined it just says undefined now for our last important capture information card it is the very very useful wait for user input this is extremely useful this does exactly what you think it does instead of waiting for something specific or saving the user's response as a variable it just waits for the user to say something and when the user says something it goes on now for events there's actually only one event that you're actually going to be using and that is going to be the conversation started basically that does exactly what you think it does usually we have to start the conversation when our bot not in our emulator in our emulator we will always need to start the conversation but if our bot is deployed let's say to a website or just in the shareable link the bot will still need to start the conversation if you do not have a conversation starter like this all that you need to do to have it work is just connect it to your first node. In our case, our first node is still here, so we just connect it like that. So in a shareable link, I'll show you guys later, it will start the conversation. In the emulator, you will always need to start the conversation. Now, our last section is utilities. And utilities are basically just things that you can put on your workflow itself. It's pretty useful if you have a really, really big bot and then you need, just need some color in there. I'll show you guys what it looks like. So basically, if we zoom out of it and then we add a comment, then you can just put a comment like this is a test box and then you can make it bigger select your text that's very hard there we go select your text make it 2xl and you can change the color to say orange and then there we go it's like a nice little color coding you can put images in if you like you can also right click put that image in for an example i don't do it because it does tend to slow down the bot sometimes when you're working with it and when you're loading, so I don't really do it, but you can decorate your workspace too, if you like. Now for our last different cards, I'm gonna be teaching you guys how to use the table cards. So first off, let's create a new table. You go back to workflows in your dashboard, just say new 
table and we'll call this table our users. And there we go, it will automatically name it users table. So we're gonna add a few fields. So let's first add a field called um, your name. It'll be a string and it'll be searchable. Then we'll put in your age, we'll make that a number and it doesn't need to be searchable. And then we'll just say your address. That will be a string and it will not be searchable. And there we go, now we have a table. Now let's add our first record. So we're just gonna say add a record. We'll say my name, we'll say my age, and we'll just put in a fake address. Now we'll add a few more records. So now let's make our addresses searchable. And now first I'm gonna show you guys the find records card. So this, we use the find records card when we don't know what our user's ID is, our a unique identifier is. So we'll drag in a find record table. We wanna search our only table, the users table. And now this is the criteria. So now we're gonna say, we are gonna look for our record based on the person's name. Name is, and then we'll just put my name. You can also put this as a variable, but and that in that case, you would say at workflow.name. However, we are gonna be just searching for my name, and then our result variable will need to be an array. So let's just call this person info. Now, usually you wouldn't be able to have two variables with the same name, but that is only if the variable types are the same. This person info variable is an array. This is an object, so we can do it. Now we have person info, and now we're just gonna display that. We're gonna put a text card. So now we're just gonna put a wait for user info card in so that we, the conversation won't end. Now we just select user table again, and there we go. Now, if we run our code, and there we are. Now if we go check person info, under our zero, you can see here that my name is Ibertus, my age is 18, and that's where I live. That's the find records card. Now we're gonna delete that. I'm gonna show you guys the next one. Now we use get record when we already know a person's unique identifier. So we're gonna drag in get record, we're gonna select our table, and now the record ID. If we go into our record table, you see here that we all have a unique ID. See, I'm one, two, three, four. So we use get record when we already know our ID. So we know, let's use John's. So his record ID is two. We'll use the result variable. Our result variable in get record is always an object. So here we can use person info again. So now if we run our code and we check here, person info has six keys and his name is John, he's 20 and he lives at nine Apple Street. Now delete your record. This time let's use the insert record card. So we're gonna select a table and now we need to give this thing new value. So let's say that you have a login system bot and you want users to be able to add accounts. So first we're gonna need to ask for the person's name. So we're gonna use a raw input card. Say, what is your name? And we'll save it as workflow.name because we already have that variable. Then we're gonna ask for the age. I'm gonna drag in a number capture card. I'm gonna say, what is age? Save that as age. And then lastly, we'll ask for the address with raw input. We'll just say, what is your address? And we'll save it as, now we're gonna go into our insert record card again, and we're gonna put in those values as variables. So at name, we're gonna have that as our workflow.name. Our age is gonna be very important. Click this button so that it knows it will be a variable. Age, address, address. Now we're gonna restart a conversation. Now we'll be able to put in our own values and we'll put in that record. So my name is, uh, Jonathan, I'm 26, I live at 12 Great Avenue. And there we are now, it's waiting for our user input because it has already inserted that record. So now if we check our table, we'll see there's a fifth record now, and it's Jonathan, he's 26, and he lives at 12 Great Avenue. So that is insert record, we'll delete that. And our next one is update record. And you can probably guess what this does. It just updates a value that we want. So we're gonna put that in, choose our table, and we already have a record ID. So let's say that we are gonna be changing mine and my record ID is one. Then our property to update, let's say that I change address. So we're gonna say we wanna update our address and our new address will be stored in the variable address. So now we just need to put in a raw input card again. What is your new address? We'll save the outcome as address. Now if we run our conversation, let's say I moved and I knew and have a new address. Let's say it is 16 Leachy Street, it will update 
only that value in my record. So now if we check, my new address is 16 Leachy Street. Now for our last one, it's very straightforward. It's a delete record card. You can probably guess exactly what this does. So we're gonna drag it in and we're just gonna delete the record number three. There's no criteria here. You can have it as a variable, but we don't really need to like this. And if we run our code now, it will delete John's record. As you can see before, John still has his record. He has record ID number two. John, he lives at nine Apple Street. If we run our conversation now, go back in, we'll see John is gone. All right, so that is how to use every single card in BotPress. Next up, I'm gonna show you guys agents. So here, if we go into our dashboard and we click on agents, you see we have quite a few agents here. We have an HITL agent, that means a human in the loop. This is not really gonna be necessary because you guys are all beginners. I doubt you guys are gonna be using this, but it does exist. You can enable and disable bots like so. Next up, we have a translator agent. This bot is extremely useful. I've used it once. It will translate every single message that the bot sends. It's very useful. And a personality agent, if you wanna be funny, basically this bot can have any personality that you want it to have. Our knowledge agent it is by far the most useful. This is basically if you have a knowledge base, this is how the bot will use it. This is how the bot will convey that information is with a knowledge agent. If you're not using the knowledge base in your bot, I recommend disabling this and re-abling if you need it. And the summary agent is also not really that useful. I've never used it, but I suppose it does have its use cases. I basically just summarize the conversation into a transcript if you want to use it.